Coming from that, in terms of the private sector growth, one of the largest uh, enterprises in, certainly in Azerbaijan in the region, is the oil sector and the natural gas sector. This has been an area which has set the, really the, the sort of the rules for a lot of how investment has gone on in Azerbaijan, it's set a lot of different uh, bases for how things are going. And so with that, I'd like to turn the floor over, I really mean it this time, to my old friend Elshad Nasirov, who's vice president of Sokar, the state oil company of Azerbaijan. He is also a distinguished former diplomat. He has played an instrumental role in helping realize the Southern Gas Corridor, which as we said, that's a $40 billion plus project. Um, one which has involved a number of different uh, technical challenges, governmental challenges. Um, Elshad, floor Thank yours. you, Ambassador Chikuta. First of all, I would like to thank Ambassador Miller for not saying any awful words about Azerbaijan, so I'm <laughs> happy about that. But as a matter of confession, I have to say that, unfortunately, today, earlier in the morning, in the Russian city of Khanty Mansisk, an Azerbaijani chess player, Timur Rajabov, knocked out in the quarterfinal of the oh. American chess player, Grossmeister, uh -huh. Jeffrey Siang. So I congratulate all Azerbaijanis, and I have to <laughs> apologize in front of the uh, American citizens here, especially when the, the, the winner was my son-in-law. Oh. Oh. So he will be in the semifinal, so we hope that Azerbaijan will win there. Yeah, Frankly speaking, it's so good to be here in New York or in Washington, I want to appreciate the work and the job done by the Caspian Policy Center because uh, every year or after several years, we are coming to Washington or New York to report to the audience about the progress that we make about the construction of oil and gas corridors. And a couple of years ago, I was here talking and promising about the completion of the gas pipeline. And then I was told that we don't need any promises. We need commitments from you. And then I heard this uh, serious, about the serious difference between the definition of promise and commitment. It's like in a hotel uh, restaurant for breakfast, when you expect eggs and bacon in the morning, you know that for the chicken, she or it can promise eggs in the morning, but for the pig, it's a commitment. <laughs> so now we are proudly here saying, can report to all of you that we have successfully completed the construction of this huge pipeline connecting Baku on the bank of the Caspian Lake. Actually, it's a lake uh, passing through Georgia, Turkey, Greece, Bulgaria, Albania, and on to Italy. So in all of these countries, except for Bulgaria and Italy, everything is completed, and we can deliver gas to the European Union anytime when our partners in Italy and Bulgaria will fulfill their commitments. We already started the volumes, uh, delivery of volumes of new gas to Turkey. So we are all set for this uh, very serious project supported by the United States and the European Union of the alternative source and alternative route of delivery of gas from the Caspian region to the heart of the European Union. Last week we celebrated in Azerbaijan the 25th anniversary of the oil contract, which was signed in 1994 with the participation of the American, British, and other companies. So next year, uh, we are absolutely sure that we will complete the first phase of the Southern Gas Corridor, and the Caspian gas for the first time will be delivered to at least Greece and Albania, and then we expect the delivery of gas further on into Italy, Switzerland, Germany, uh, France, depending on the cooperation between the Central Asian countries and the Southern Gas Corridor. For Azerbaijan, the transit of gas across the country is not a bargain chip. It's a commitment of the country since, differently from other countries, many other countries, Azerbaijan signed the Energy Charter Treaty with all addenda and for Azerbaijan, the transit of gas from the Central Asia and Kazakhstan 
is not subject to negotiations. Uh, it's a commitment and obligation of the country to provide transit facilities to the uh, countries of, to the east of the Caspian. And of course, it's very important for not only for the European Union, the world of consumption, but also for the Central Asian countries to have the diversified uh, sources of consumption and demand. For Azerbaijan, it's very important to have the additional volumes of gas since uh, it's our genuine and sincere desire and welcome of the foreign volumes of gas since our volumes have been sold to the European Union for the 25 years ahead of us, and the more gas in the, is in the pipeline that we constructed, the less we pay for the transportation of our gas, multiplying our benefits and profits. Uh, it's a very important topic right now to speak about the environmental issues and of course, everybody knows that during the Second World War, Baku was providing 80% of the Soviet production of oil and gas, oil and oil products. And of course, nobody cared about the environment of the Caspian Sea and the territories adjacent to the Caspian Sea in Baku. So now we have to clean up. And the oil company of Azerbaijan now is making serious steps in cleaning up uh, the territories and the waters. And Sokar is proudly the first company in the Caspian region to end gas flaring and production and new generation project mm -hmm. use best practices to prevent methane leakages. We're also open to any uh, technologies reducing the uh, environmental risks. And we hope that we will continue to do so. And of course, it's very pleasant, it's very good to to be present at the Caspian Policy Center, speaking about the Caspian region, with Ambassador Chikuta, who differently from the first US ambassador in Baku, who was nominated in 1992, Richard Miles, Ambassador Chikuta didn't have the problems the first US ambassador had in 1992, when the US embassy in Baku didn't get diplomatic mail on a regular basis not because of the lack of transportation connections, but because of the fact that the diplomatic mail department of the State Department used to send the diplomatic mail not to Baku, Azerbaijan, but by mistake to Abidjan, the capital of Ivory Coast. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ambassador Chikuta was absolutely happy about that. Thank you very much, Ambassador. <laughs> So if there was ever an argument to keep the government out of private sector. <laughs> <laughs>